Hello everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. Today we need to talk about part one of Indian constitution. Part one has four articles. Article one, two, three, four. Consider someone who belongs to other part of the world and that person is holding our constitution. And as that person turns the page and opens part one, now what do you think he or she should expect from this part one? So I hope you would think, yes, if this is the entity, the political entity whom we call India, I'm using the word political entity because constitution is giving you the framework, the way this political structure is going to function, right? So don't you think the first part, the first article should actually tell us the name, name of this entity. Right? And this is exactly which is what is mentioned in Article 1. India, that is Bharat. Right? What is the second thing you expect? Name. Along with name, you should expect the territory. Means, what is the territorial expense of that area? Right? And not just territory. How this territory is organized? Is it one administrative unit controlled from one central authority? Or do we have some other constituent units, states or UTs? The way this political entity is organized territorially, this is given to us by Part 1, Article 1. Right? Now, this is the broad framework. Okay? Now the debate is, India that is Bharat. Why are framers chose these names? Why not Hindustan? As you know, the Hindustan, because we had some members in Constituent Assembly who were supporting this idea, Hindustan should be adopted. So it was, it was discussed and later the consensus was on this point that, that although the word Hindu originated from geographical expression and that's why some constitutional framers were suggesting this idea, but the point is later the connotation of Hindu word changed and got attached to a specific religion and our constitution should reflect a secular power right and that is why one indianized adoption one indianized name was adopted which is bharat and the other name india because uh, around the world this particular territory geographical expression administrative unit was popular with the name india which originated from the word from this river Indus, right? Now, apart from this, art, this is the broad framework of Article 1. We are going to get into the details also. Article 2, Article 3, that talks about establishment of new state, altering the boundary of already, st the states which we already have, or renaming the state. Now, to achieve these objectives, what process we need to follow, this is mentioned in Part if this is mentioned in Article 4. So it means Article 1 talks about name, territory, administrative structure, broad administrative structure, how territory is organized, right? Article 2 talks about establishment of new state from outside, from outside. Article 3 talks about to change the boundary, name of the states inside, means the states which are already part of Indian territory right and article 4 talks about how to actually achieve that the process you need to follow this is the broad framework of part one of indian constitution now let's go step by step this is article one as you can see the name india that is bharat shall be union of state now there's a there was a debate over this why union why union and not federation because some constitution framers were saying federation should be the word. They were saying federation because already as we have taken some provisions from government of India 1935 and there was clear division of power between union or you can say here I'm, I'm going to use the word central authority or you can say central government and provincial authority. Provincial means you can say states. 
So division of power was already there. And constitutional framers were agreed on this point. Yes, we are going to continue this division. Right? Then if division is there, and it means, it, it is clearly visible that it's a property of a federation, then why are you going for the world union? At this point of time, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar stood up in the Constituent Assembly and he explained. He said, my friends, we have to adopt the word union because the most prevalent definition of the word federation gives some more powers to the states. For example, in case of America, the federation, the federal you know, entity USA, United States of America, was formed out of an agreement between states. And if you read American history, you'll find they have fought a civil war just to protect the idea of united federation. And there, if you have to change the boundary of any state, you cannot do this without consent of that state. So it means division of power is there, but state have considerable power. But same cannot be accepted in context of India, because India is a large geographical expression, so much diversity, as well as probability of secessionist movements. And that is why the word union is better. It means we have federal model, we call it quasi-federal, not totally federal, but we are going to use the word union so that a message can be clear that India is an indestructible union. You cannot break that union. Means no part of India can be seceded to other territory. You cannot break India. India is an indestructible union of destructible states. Destructible states means you can change the boundary of the states. For example, from Uttar Pradesh we carved out Uttarakhand. Madhya Pradesh we carved out Chhattisgarh. From Bihar we carved out Jharkhand. Right? I hope this debate, this word got clear to you. Now, apart from this, if you read the statement, the states and territories thereof shall be as specified in first schedule. What does it mean? You should consider it like this. You have a book and you have opened this book. And you have just opened first chapter, that is part one of Indian Constitution. Right? And article one, as I told you, is telling you name as well as territory. And the constituent units and constituent units are states and UTs now. How many numbers are there? What is the name of these states? And what is the territorial, you know, uh, what's the area of these? So, now think from the drafting committee's perspective. If you add the whole list within this article 1, and you just start naming this at this point of time, at this particular uh, you can say place, don't you think it will make the whole article 1 reading cumbersome, right? That is why when it comes to adding list, so they were added in the last. So in the last means as we go to the end of the constitution, there you find schedules. So first schedule gives us the information about the territory. Okay, these are states and these are UTs. This is the name and this is the area. Okay, that is why first schedule was used. If you, know, you want to know the name area, just go back and check the first schedule. Okay, now, the territory of India. Now, my friends, you got two phrases here at this point of time. Union of state and territory of India. There's a difference here. Union of states and territory of India. If I ask, which expression mentioned in Article 1 is larger? What do you think? This is one and this is two. You have, you can, um, some of you might think, oh, this may be equal. What is the difference between Union of States and Territory of India? There's a difference. Territory of India, Territory of India is a bigger expression. Because when you say Union of States, we only talk about states. Right? States. But when we use Territory of India, then Territory of India is a wider expression. Because it has three components. Number one is states. Number two, UTs. And number three, all territories which we can acquire in future legally. 
And when I say legally, it means there should be law. There should be legal process while you acquire that territory. For example, Sikkim, right? 35th Constitutional Amendment Act, 1974. Then later we change the status. We are going to talk about that. 36th Constitutional Amendment Act. Now, the point here is, Union of States only talk about states. Territory of India talks about states, UTs, and acquired territory. It is a larger expression, right? And this is exactly what is actually mentioned in this Clause 3 of Article 1. Okay, these are the three areas. Now, as I told you, acquisition legally. And in what way we can acquire? So there are many ways. For example, treaty. We can sign a treaty. Purchase. Yes, territories can be purchased. You can take example of Alaska. So US, now, as of now, if you open the map, you'll find Alaska, which is geographically se separated, you know, from mainland USA. But it is part of USA. But, but how? Because USA purchased it, right? Gift, lease, plebiscite means, plebiscite means we are going to ask those people, what do you want? Aapki kya raza hai? Kidhar jana chaate ho? If these people say, no, we want to be part of India, then they will be part of India. Right? Occupation, conquest or subjugation. These can also be ways. Some of you might think, sir, if you are saying conquest, subjugation, occupation, we can march our army and acquire that territory. So how can it be legal? My friends, I've said legal. So we can make it legal now. Take example of Goa. We acquired Goa, which was a Portuguese territory. And how we acquired? We used our force, right? We used our defense forces. So we had a law regarding this. Yes, we are acquiring this Goa in this particular law, right? So I've not used the word international law, although in our constitution, Article 51, we are going to talk about later. Indian constitution mentions that we believe in, you can say, following international laws. But here, the word is legally. Okay? Now, so I hope now this point is quite clear to you. Name of the country and type of the polity, structure, administrative unit. This is what is mentioned in Article 1. This point is now clear to you. Why union of states? Word is used, not federation. I hope it is clear. Now, <clears throat> this is what I have mentioned. We are different from American Federation. Because in American Federation, if they want to alter the boundary, consider they want to uh, change a boundary of a particular area or of a state, then they need assent of that state. But in, in case of India, we, it is not necessary to have assent of state, then only we can actually do that. This is not the case. How we do that, I am going to tell you the procedure in Article 4. Now, Article 2, two words are used, admission or establishment of new states. Now, I am making a statement and you have to tell me that statement is true or false, okay? Expression in Article 2 of Indian Constitution, using expression mentioned in Article 2 of Indian Constitution, Indian Parliament can admit or establish a union territory as parliament deems fit. Okay? Now tell me the statement would be true or false. Here the expression is states, not UT. First of all, some of you might be thinking, what is the difference between the admission and establishment? Heck, you can easily remember it like this. Whenever you have to think of Article 2, you should think that this is India, okay? And using Article 2, we can actually add some other territory into India. Admit and establish as a state, a new state. That is why the word is new state. But when it comes to Article 3, Article 3, consider this is India, and Article 3 talks about that Parliament has this power to increase, decrease, alter, rename. 
four points are given. Increase the territory of a state, decrease the territory of a state, alter the boundary of a state, or rename any state. Okay? So this can be done using Article 3. Please remember this. Increase, decrease, alter, rename of states. And which states we are talking about? I am not using the word new. I am talking about those states which are already part of India. Right? So it means we are talking about states which are already here. This was a small state. Now with the Kripa of Article 3, we have expanded its territory. This was a big state. By the Kripa of Article 3, we have divided this state. Consider example of Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh. Uttarakhand carved out of Uttar Pradesh. Right? So it means Article 2 is outside matter and this is inside matter. Right? I hope now it is quite simple for you to understand. Right? And I also focused on one word. In my statement, I said UT. Please remember, Article 2 specifically ta talks about the word states, new states. Okay? Admission and establishment. What is the difference between the two? When I say admission, it means it may be possible. There are multiple interpretations to that. One interpretation is, it may be possible, there's a fully functional state outside Indian territory. Outside Indian territory. For example, Sikkim. Fully functional state. There was monarchy there. King was there. Right? And now, there was willingness of that state. Or maybe other way. In case of Sikkim, there was willingness. They wanted to be part of India. And there may not be, you know, there may be a category where there is no willingness. So, if that is in the interest of India, we can use the provisions. As I told you, Article 1, or then we talked about the last case. Now, the point is, in case, in so Sikkim was admitted, means Sikkim was admitted, admission was happened. And there may be a possibility that there is a territory somewhere in, say, Indian Ocean. There is an island. And there is no one living there. So that is not a functional state. This is just a territory. Okay. So now we want to establish that state and enter it into Indian, you can say Indian territory. Then that can be done also. Means we can get into a process by which we also move our people there. We establish that as a fully functional state and that then actually we can admit it. Now, the point is, the word is new state. And apart from this, it is it becomes important for us to read this that the power to admit to the Indian Union, who has this power? Indian Parliament has this power. The power to establish new state. Admission and establishment of state which are not part of India, as I told you, outside. Right? Now, one more line is important in this article, which is, as Parliament deems fit. It means, the condition of that state, on what basis that state will be admitted, May, will be decided by parliament. And there was a huge debate on this point. It is quite interesting to know. Yes, you can read it here. Let me show you first and then you can read. Consider the case of Sikkim. So in case of Sikkim, what happened? When it was added uh, in 1974, By 35th Constitution Amendment, so what happened? It was given a status of associated state. Associated state. And this word, this associated state word is not mentioned in our Constitution. Then some legal luminaries of the time asked, what is this associated state? This, this phrase that as Parliament deems fit, does it mean that Parliament can actually invent its own model of governance? Because in case of associated state, what was happening? That Sikkim was not integrated fully in 1974. We took certain responsibilities with regard to Sikkim, for example, foreign affairs, communication, defense, etc. Not fully integrated. But later, the demand from the people as well, in 1975, 
we changed its status and agreed to enter into enter Sikkim as a you know established as a you know separate state fully fledged state it means the status which is there with all other states will be there with regard to Sikkim also there was another article with regard to uh, Sikkim 371 F means we added this to give some special you know uh, clauses to act there you are going to take, talk about it when we talk about some special clauses with respect to state. But what is important here is, in this case, what was Supreme Court stand? Supreme Court said that in this article it is saying that as Parliament deems fit, but it does not mean that Parliament can admit a state and bring out a model of administration which is against the basic structure of Indian Constitution. So it means the power of admitting and establishing a new state as mentioned in Article 2 is not absolute power. Parliament has to adhere to basic structure of Indian constitution when it comes to the way this particular state is going to be modeled, the way its administration is going to run. Okay, as a yoga, ki okay, uh, we have uh, cre created a separate state. And now we have said this particular state will have its own defense. This particular state is going, going to have its own army. This particular state is going to have its own foreign affairs. On this basis, we are adding this state. On, if such kind of arrangement is made, then Supreme Court will say, Aapne kar liya, ab hamari Then Supreme Court would say, this particular process which you have done is null and void. Because this is against the basic structure of Indian constitution. There cannot be any constituent unit in Indian Union which has its own army or own foreign affairs. Right? I hope now you are able to connect with this debate. Now, what does Article 2 of the Constitution of India say? There is an interesting part here. There was one constituent assembly member, Mr. Nazaruddin, and he raised the point that as he was reading Article 2 and Article 3, he was saying, this huge overlap between Article 2 and Article 3. Because discussion was still going on. I have simplified this for you because a lot of discussion has already happened. Now clarity is there. Because as this provision were about to get added, so at that point of Mr. Nazaruddin raised this point. And he said, why not amalgamate this Article 2 Article 3? Why you are adding another article? Let's make these provisions add into Article 2 only. Outside matter, inside matter, both add in Article 2. So at this point of time, uh, there, his amendment, his argument was not accepted. It was said that since the, we are talking about admission establishment from outside, it should be mentioned in separate article. And when it comes to internal uh, alterations of the boundaries, it should be in Article 3. That is a standard practice in other constitutions as well. Right? Now, Parliament cannot establish a new union territory by passing a law. This is from this particular point where I said, I told you, that Article 2 uses the word new state, okay? It's not using the word union territory, okay? So this becomes, you know, you should be, you know, <clears throat> having attention to detail to this particular point. Such terms and condition as it thinks fit, so I've already discussed with you, even though it is saying as, as it thinks fit, but you have to adhere to the basic structure of the Constitution. What was the Constituent Assembly debate? So. Assembly agreed that given the size of India, an authority need to be given to central authority. It means if some new entity need to be added, then you should not ask states whether we need to add this particular territory into India or not. Agar bahar se aap koi territory ko add kar rahe ho, to states se thoda poocha jayega. Ye central gaam hai, right? So center will actually have this power. So at that point of time, some were saying ki if you are adding some new territory, at least ask states as well. <coughs> but it was rejected. Right? Article 2, Article 3 ko overlap kar rahe, merge kar dije. I already told you this debate, Mr. Nazaruddin Ahmad raised this point. Now, Supreme Court judgment, I already told you, did not give Parliament unfettered power to establish or conditions of new state. It should adhere to the basic structure of Indian Constitution. Who is going to tell what is the basic structure? Supreme Court will say. Supreme Court will explain what is basic structure. Okay? <clears throat> now, this is a simple question for you. Just attempt this. Who has the authority to establish new state in Union of India? Lok Sabha, Parliament, President, Government of that state. Deekhi, ek to hota asan, ek hota lollipop. This is lollipop question, answer is Parliament. 
some students who would like to use their mind, they, they might say, Sir, even if we say that uh, the parliament is having power, but why can't we use tick president? Because any bill related to establishment of a new state or alteration of boundary, that bill need to be signed by president, then only that bill can be turned into act. So without the sign of president, can you actually consider establishment of new state? No, without sign of president, we can't. Then why not? We are marking president, we are marking parliament. So those students who are thinking on these lines, my friends, when we use the word parliament, parliament consists of Lok Sabha, Ras Sabha and President. Right? So when I'm when I'm marking as parliament, so it means the whole process is included there. Got it? Now let's talk about Article 3. What I told you, Article 3 is about internal reorganization of boundary and power related to it is with parliament. Right? Told you increase, diminish means decrease, alter and name. Right? This is what uh, can be done as per Article 3. Right? Article 3 talks about it. Now, one, a bill contemplating the above changes can be introduced in the parliament only with the prior recommendation of the president. Um, now, let's simplify this, all of this with understanding the procedure. Okay? Now, tell me, which state you want to divide? Aap naam boliye. Kisko divide karna? Abhi hum karte. Also, there was a debate, uh, I think two elections back in UP, uh, one leader of UP, so she was saying, if people vote me this time in uh, UP legislative assembly elections, then she will ensure that UP will be divided into three parts. UP, Uttar Pradesh will be divided into three parts as there were uh, such kind of demands from certain sections. So she was making this as an election promise. Now, those people who have not read Indian Constitution, then they may be, you know, influenced, ki, oh, theek hai, ne kaha hai, jeet gaye to shayad kar denge. But if someone reads the Article 3, Article 4, then that person can actually rise in front of that leader and ask, ma'am, how can you do that? Can you just tell me the process? How can you do that? Because a state government does not have any such power to divide itself into separate state. Only parliament has such power. So, aapke saath, kai baar ye politicians fir ki lete ki aapko to kuch kanun ka pata hi nahi hai. That is why knowledge of Indian constitution is a way to empower our democracy. Right? Now, how the process can start? First of all, the process is starts from council of ministers at the level of union. They will propose a bill they will propose a bill. And what bill we are talking about? Bill of division, bifurcation of a state. Okay? So this bill of bifurcation of a state, say UP, no hard feelings. Okay? Kisi ki bhavna hai nahi, isse touch honi chahi. Take it. Just for an example. So first step is Council of Ministers proposes the bill to divide Uttar Pradesh to Honorable President. Okay? So this bill reaches Honorable President. Now what President is going to do? So this was the first step. Now President, as a second step, will send this bill to State Legislature. State Legislature. Which State Legislature we are talking about since we are dividing UP in this case? So, UP state legislature, president is going to send this bill. Yes. Now, when president is sending this bill, president is also mentioning the time within which, the time within which this bill needs to be sent back by state legislature to honorable president. That is going to be step three. Right? Now, some of you might be thinking, Sir, if you don't send it, then president will think that, that these people I have given them the time and they have not sent send this bill, then I am going to start my own process. Okay? And if they have sent this bill back within the time, and within the time, 
they can also suggest certain amendments. They can say, no, we are not agreeing on dividing Uttar Pradesh. They can say, yes, we are agreeing on dividing Uttar Pradesh, but please give Agra to this side. Please give Unnao to this side. Please give Merit to this side. Right? So it means they can actually propose their amendments. But I am not writing the word amendment here, because in their amendment ki koi sunega nahi. Kul milakar baat hi hai. Means these amendments which are proposed by state legislature are not binding on president or binding on union. In ko kuru bas naam maat ke liye bheja. Dekh lo. Division ho ra. Thik hai. Now, so this is this is the whole process, okay? It may be surprising for some. हाँ ऐसा ही है। Now, president is going to send this bill as a fourth step to any of the house, means Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. Please understand, I'm specifically mentioning the word is either. Either का मतलब क्या है? कि कहीं पे भी. UPSC play on these lines that with regard to a division of bifurcation of a state bill when it is sent from president to parliament it is first mandatorily first need to be introduced in Raj Sabha and many people think oh since Raj Sabha is council of state it means it need to be first presented to Raj Sabha nahi aisa nahi hai it is either so if it is presented into Lok Sabha Lok Sabha should pass and send this bill to Raj Sabha and when it is when it is cleared by Raj Sabha then this bill will again go to honorable president President will then sign this bill like Shashank Tyagi, kuch nahi pata time ka, right? And then this bill will turn into an act and congratulations, your state is divided. And now the point is, by which majority, by which majority this bill was passed in Lok Sabha, Raj Sabha? My friends, this was simple majority. Simple majority. Simple majority means more than 50% of votes of those members who were present there means more than 50 percent of present and voting if they say yay yay we are in favor of div dividing up then this will be passed from lok sabha same simple majority from Ras Sabha. then it will be presented to president president will sign and swaha tathastu ho gaya kam got it so this is how this whole process actually goes now point to be noted recommendation made by state legislature is not binding it may be outrightly rejected. Okay, same as was the case when uh, Telangana was carved out of Andhra Pradesh. Right, state legislature. There was not agreeing, but hua. Right, now the point is, why then we actually send this bill to state legislature agar inki sunni nahi hai to? Dekhi, case bataya mein aapko. But aisa bhi to sakta hai. It may be possible that this state legislature, since they know the ground reality better, they may actually suggest some good amendments which were not actually thought of earlier by Council of Ministers proposed bill, right? So they, these good amendments can be added, but it is the prerogative of this particular uh, minister who is going to propose this in Lok Sabha or Ras Sabha, wherever this bill is going to be sent by president, right? So it means, idea is that if some good options come in, then we can actually accept that. That's the idea, okay? So I hope this process is clear to you. Now, let's move ahead. Now, now two points need to be added in your information. Number one, if we have sent the bill once, and now at this point of time, one Union Council of Ministers, Mr. Amit Shah, he said, "Ab kuch naya idea hai. Chronology samajhi. That I want to add uh, uh, some new changes in the area which was uh, which was given to one one part of." Uh, you can say up i want that area agra which was already which was all all means earlier when this bill was sent here earlier we were planning that this will be given to eastern up then amisha ji said nahi aisa nahi chalo aisa karte hain let's give it to western up so if such thing is happening such amendment is happening at this stage fourth stage fifth stage so now is it mandatory to send this bill back to state legislature no this is what I have mentioned. Further, it is not necessary to make fresh reference to the state legislature every time an amendment is moved. Got it? Apart from this, in case of union territory, if you have to divide union territory, now consider that you, you are dividing Delhi. Right? Arvind Kejriwal government was asking that Delhi needs to be given a statehood. Consider that now Union Council of Ministers decided let's divide union territory of Delhi further. Now, so in this case, is it necessary to actually send this bill to the 
स्टेट जो द लेजिस्लेचर ऑफ दिल्ली बिकॉज दिल्ली एंड पुंडचेरी एंड इंक्लूडिंग जे एंड के नाउ सो वी हैव दीज टेरिटरीज वेयर दे इज अ प्रोविजन ऑफ स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर right so is it mandatory to send send the bill to the state legislature of ut as well no because it is a union territory right in union territory union has the hold right so it is no reference needed to be actually concerned legislature okay parliament has the sole power please remember this these kind of questions are asked okay now come the article 4 article 4 talks about the process by which you are going to do use the article 2 and article 3 मतलब जो आपकी हसरतें हैं उनको अंजाम कैसे दिया जाएगा दैट यू हैव टू डू यूजिंग आर्टिकल फोर सो आर्टिकल फोर से लॉज मेड फॉर एडमिशन और स्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ न्यू स्टेट अंडर आर्टिकल टू और चेंजिंग द बाउंड्री और चेंजिंग द नेम आर्टिकल थ्री दिस कैन बी डन विदाउट कंसिडरिंग कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट प्रोसीजर एज मैंशन इन आर्टिकल थ्री सिक्सटी एट बिकॉज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट प्रोसीजर मैंशन इन आर्टिकल थ्री सिक्सटी एट विल रिक्वायर स्पेशल मेजोरिटी राइट that would be quite cumbersome tough to do that now article 4 gives you liberty that article 2 article 3 ke andar jo aapki hasratein hain unko aap anjaam de sakte hain using the procedure of ordinary bill means simple majority right now take a look over this so answer is new state special okay Question is saying bill for formation of a new state from the existing state should be passed by simple majority, right? Already told you. Now, what is the difference between these majorities? Many students get confused. बहुत ही आसान है. Simple, simple majority as I told you that more than fifty percent of present and voting, जो वहाँ पर मौजूद हैं और वोट कर रहे हैं, उनमें से fifty percent से ज़्यादा ने बोल दिया. हाँ, it means passed. Simple majority हो गई. Absolute majority. Absolute majority means more than fifty percent of the total strength of house. If total strength of the house is say four hundred four, so absolute majority would be two zero two plus, right? Total strength of the house. This special majority has variations, as mentioned in Article three sixty eight. One variation is two by third, more than two by third of the total strength, or two by third of the present and voting. It depends on the condition. in which case you are using special majority for example uh, in case of impeachment of president we use this 2 by 3 of the total strength right and there is another constitution amendment procedure where states are not say impacted so we can use this uh, uh, more than 2 by 3 of the present and voting right so it means this is 2 by 3 case is in special majority now comes effective majority effective majority the word is effective it means more than 50% of the effective strength strength now what is the strength now take example there are 100 total seats total members total seats or total members you can say are 100 okay total membership bhi maan lijiye lok sabha ki 100 usse zyada hai hi nahi total seats hi 100 hai we are going to have elections everything on these 100 seats now 100 members got appointed to koi surprising wali baat bhi nahi hai bhai total seat thi total member bhi kitne ho gaye 100 ho gaye but ab hua kya 10 members died 10 members say disqualified kuch kaam kiye the unhone aise now as of now in those 20 seats there is there's not be any by election no new member is representing these 20 seats so as of now what is the total strength of house effective strength kitni hai 80 hai right so this is the effective strength effective strength of house so now effective majority will be more than 50% of effective strength it may it will be 41 right this is effective majority some of you might be asking sir ye kahan hai log yes take example of लोकसभा स्पीकर रिमूवल राइट वहां पर आप देखेंगे सो कई लोग वहां पर कंफ्यूज होते हैं अब दैट स्पेशल मेजोरिटी है कि इफेक्टिव मेजोरिटी दिस इज इफेक्टिव मेजोरिटी देयर ओके नाउ थिंक ऑन दिस लाइन डज द पावर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट टू डिमिनिश द एरिया ऑफ स्टेट अंडर आर्टिकल थ्री इंक्लूड ऑल्सो द पावर टू सीड सीड इंडियन टेरिटरी टू फॉरन कंट्री क्या ऐसा हो सकता है दैट आर्टिकल थ्री इज सेंग that you can change the boundary diminish the boundary increase the boundary alter rename to so, diminish ka matlab state ki boundary kam kar so 
is it possible that is it parliament is having power that to, that we are decree we are going to decrease the boundary of of our state area of our state and we are going to give remaining part to another other country no this cannot happen okay if, if you are doing that then you have to uh, amend the constitution as well now so why this debate so there was a case of berubari union bahut hi simple si story hai suniye in west bengal there is a jalpaiguri district up within the jalpaiguri district you know earlier so there was berubari so berubari union was a territory okay and uh, as you know for dividing the territory of india and pakistan so earlier you know that this bangladesh was eastern pakistan so radcliffe was given this responsibility by mr bombet and radcliffe said sir it is nearly impossible to actually divide this big territory you know finally within this interval of time but uh, mohan bhatt said ye to karna hi hai aapko we have so many troubles here we have to exit so at that point of time there were some lapses some gaps in the division or you can say boundary demarcation of indian pakistan as well so similarly so there was no mention of this particular area in official document that this particular area belongs to which country eastern pakistan yani ke pakistan or india so pakistan raised this point this particular area maybe a small area but why it is it is not mentioned in uh, the official document it means i am going to claim this area this area is going to be mine so what was the india's response ab hum hai bhale log ideal we said let's do one thing we are going to divide this area we are going to divide this area half part will be yours and other half will be ours although uh, uh, there were some people who were saying ki hum other half bhi kyon de rahe hain unko right but the point is ab yahan par legal question uth gaya is it possible legally constitutionally to actually give part one part of uh, a, a area which we consider is ours to pakistan so when this case was brought up in the supreme court then it was agreed that we cannot cede the territory of india to any foreign entity without amendment to the constitution sabse pehli baat to uske liye to fir aapko amendment karna padega theek hai aisa aap nahi kar sakte dusri baat if there is a land swap if there is a case of land swap because there were some, there were some enclaves also enclaves means chote chote areas which officially were in indian boundary official papers were in indian boundary but they were administratively controlled by bangladesh and there were some areas which were officially towards the eastern pakistan or we can say later bangladesh but we were administratively controlling them because these areas were having you know such a intermixing means certain villages people intermingling there was already you know a movement and this was one reason that this confusion led to you know so many immigrants you know coming into india and you saw a problem in assam now so supreme court held that the power of parliament to diminish the area of state under article 3 does not cover does not cover succession of indian territory kyunki abhi aapko bataya tha article 3 deals in inside matter inside matter and this is like you are actually you wants to give this particular part to others that is not possible using article 3 so hence indian territory can be ceded to a foreign state only by amending the constitution under article 68 right this is what i have just explained to you on the other hand supreme court 1969 ruled that settlement of a boundary dispute jaise ki land swap india and another country does not require constitutional amendment kyunki jab aap boundary dispute ko settle kar rahe ho jaise land swap kar rahe ho that part and claims were officially ours but controlled by them let's do that so that will not be amount to cessation of cessation of your of your territory and that is why uske liye fir aapko amendment nahi karna padega using article 68 fir wahan par aap simple route use kar sakte ho it can be done by executive action as it does not involve cessation of indian territory foreign territory then 100 constitutional amendment act happened 2015 which enacted the transfer of certain territories to bangladesh okay in 2015 it happened it settled the border confusion with bangladesh now there was integration of princely states as well this is there is a story to that means uh, when britishers british parliament enacted this indian independence act 1947 so they gave three options either join india or pakistan or you can claim independence ab usi ke reason ki wajah se hum dekh rahe hain the kashmir issue right then this is the story that they means hyderabad junagadh kashmir they were reluctant 
Hyderabad got integrated using police action. Junagad, referendum happened there. And Kashmir, there was instrumental taxation. Right? So this is a map. You can see Hyderabad, Junagad, Dadar Nagar Haveli was part of Portuguese. We took Goa, it was also part of Portuguese. Pondicherry, it was part of French. Then we took them because this we wanted to build a consolidated India. Now, coming to the point, reorganization of state. Reorganization. It means changing the boundaries. And some of you might think, to konsi badi baat? Abhi abhi baat to kariye, Article 3. But the point is, on what basis we should actually divide state? Right? So, as we actually got independent, so that in some parts, there was a rise of this movement of getting a separate state on the linguistic lines. Means just on the basis of language, we want a separate state. Although that's a very important issue uh, because it, it is having logical reasons also. Right? And the reason is, the view says, if an area is organized based on common language, then these people will be, these people will be, uh, it become, it will become easier for these people to connect with local administration in their own language. And since these are integrated on the basis of language, it will actually spur development as well because they will feel more connected to the administration of newly independent India. So now on this point, Dhar Commission was actually made. So Dhar Commission was made to check on what basis we can actually do the reorganization. Dhar Commission said, on linguistic lines, no. No to linguistic lines. But we can do this on administrative convenience basis. If a large area is being administered from one center, and it is this one center is not having administrative capacity to fulfill the aspirations of these people, then divide it. But the demands were on. At that point of time, there was another JVP committee was made. Jawaharlal Nehru, we Vallabhai Patel, P. Pattabhi Sitaramaya. They also rejected this demand of linguistic as language as the basis of creation of state. So they also said security, unity, economic prosperity would be the basis of creation of new state. But simultaneously there was a movement which was building up in Madras state. One famous leader, Poti Shriramalu, he died or some, you can say that he was fighting for the cause of a separate state of Andhra should be carved out of Madras state on the basis of Telugu language. So when he died, finally government created first linguistic state of Andhra. Now Fazal Ali commission was made because now many other states were demanding. Just say Saurashtra, one Marathi speaking people saying we need Maharashtra, Gujarati speaking saying Gujarat and similar de demands were actually bringing up. Fazal Ali Commission was made. So Fazal Ali Commission finally accepted, but Fazal Ali Commission also gave some guidelines. It cannot be just, you know, on the basis of language. We need to think of preservation and strengthening of unity of India. Linguistic and cultural homogeneity. Financial, economic and administrative aspects are very important. Even if you create, carve out a state on the basis of language, but they are not having enough resources or a financial capacity, then it will be difficult to sustain that particular structure. Planning and promotion of the welfare of the people, right? These should be the basis. That is what Fazal Ali said. And then we saw creation of states on the basis of language as well. I hope this lecture added some value in your preparation. See you in the next lecture. Till then, Shashank Tyagi signing off. If you find any difficulty, then you can shoot me a message on Telegram or Twitter. And for this PDF, you can find this PDF in Shashank Tyagi for you, Telegram. Take care.